Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my greenhouse. I'm happy to have you here with me today. We are going to spend today getting my greenhouse ready to move all of my seedlings, or most of my seedlings anyway, that I have started in my indoor grow room inside out here. There's a couple reasons that I need to do that. Number one, a lot of my seedlings need to be potted up. In fact, I started some early tomatoes and they are looking very sad and very much in need of larger containers. However, I do not have enough space in my indoor grow room to accommodate all of those larger containers that I'm going to need to pot everything up into. So those plants need to get moved out here. This time of year, I try to have most of my seedlings out from underneath the grow lights. They just do so much better when they're underneath the natural sunlight than they do in the grow room. And also, like I said, I'm just out of space. So it's really important that we get this job done. As you can see, I have the inside of this greenhouse lined with greenhouse film. That's just this plastic. The outside is polycarbonate. The reason that we decided to put this plastic on the inside is to help to block some of the drafts. So when the wind comes and blows in underneath the eaves, it blows this plastic down and I am forever stapling it up. Dan is on the hunt right now for some scrap wood that we can use to tack this up. So you can see over here, up here, we already have one put up that I tacked up there last year and I just didn't get around to getting any more of them on, but that's something that we really need to do. We also have some of the polycarbonate on the top, you can see that has blown off. So Dan's going to get up and put some extra screws in there. We were talking about putting some new roofing on there, but when we talked about it, we just decided that with so many projects going on on the farm right now, we're just going to screw on those pieces that keep blowing off in the wind and making it really noisy when I'm working inside there and worry about redoing this, uh, the roof another time. When we first built this greenhouse, we actually built it to grow in and you can see the beds in underneath. And I grew in it, I think for two years. And then we got our high tunnel, which is over here. This is all the stuff that we just took out of here <laughs> that was stored in here over the winter, all my pots and rakes and shovels and things like that. Anyway, we did know that the long-term goal for this space was to turn it into a seed starting and seedling nursery space. So a few years ago, we built these shelves in here and it is a fantastic space. I love, love, love being able to have this. No, I think that's perfect because they don't, it doesn't need to be super hefty. It just needs to be able to hold the plastic on from the wind. That's fantastic. So I'm kind of wondering if I have enough paint left, if I should just slap a quick coat of paint on these or just not bother. Cause we're going to have to take all this down when we want to put the harder polycarbonate on. What do you think? I'm kind of thinking at this point, we maybe should just yeah, get them on. Really okay. We'll just get them on. My opinion, but it's up to you. No, that's good. We're kind of at the point on the farm. Spring is like this where it's just pedal to the metal and we are just trying to get stuff done. So I'm not going to paint these. I'm just going to put them up as is and get this set up so that I can actually get my tomatoes out here and at least get my poor, sad early tomatoes potted up. We were going to put the plastic on the high tunnel today, but it is so windy outside that I think it would be very difficult. It'd be like trying to get a sail attached onto something uh, with the wind. So that will probably have to wait until a calmer day. But today we'll get all this done at least. I found a few onions up there that I missed as well. In the fall, when we harvest all of our garlic and our onions, we use this to cure them. It works really, really well because there's lots of good airflow and there's enough UV protection that it doesn't impact them at all. They actually cure really nicely out here. So I'm just gonna throw these ones out into the compost. So these are the heaters that I use. And the reason that I use these ones is, I think they were on sale actually, is the reason that I originally bought them, but they are thermostatically controlled so I can set the temperature. And that's really important because sometimes when the sun comes up, if it starts, if it comes up and it's really bright before I have a chance to get out here, it can actually heat up way too hot for my seedlings underneath the covers that I'm gonna be putting on here. So we'll get these set up. Okay, so one of the other things that I am going to do 
let me show you. Can you see all the grass that's all down here? So I just pulled all of that out from in between the inside of the plastic and the outside of the plastic. The grass grows up between there and it drives me absolutely bonkers. So I'm just pulling the plastic off along the bottom, pulling all that grass out. I'm gonna cut it all off and then I am going to pour some vinegar down all the way along the edge of the greenhouse all the way around. And because I'm not growing out around the outside of this greenhouse, I do have one raised bed up over there, but the vinegar is not going to affect that. It's not going to affect anything in my garden, but it will hopefully stop this grass from growing back because it drives me crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna go grab some vinegar. I'll be right back. Okay, I've come prepared. I'm just gonna go pour some of this around the outside and then I'm gonna do the same on the inside. Yeah, well that one's, there's two spots though that were never screwed down. So I think the wind just caught it one day. This isn't very fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. Looks much better though, without all that grass. Pain in the butt. Usually I don't use this back shelf where you guys are for, I don't know, at least three or four weeks. So I'm actually going to move all of the things that I am going to be using in here, like my soil blocker trays and things like that over here so that I can set these spaces all up for plants themselves. Okay, while Dan is finishing up out there, I just wanted to show you the pots that we make, and I've shown this a few times on my channel, but for those of you that are new, I'll show you again or to give you a refresher. We buy these boxes of old newspapers for a couple of bucks a box, and these are all dyed with plant-based dyes, so I feel pretty comfortable using them. Uh, plus my plants only usually stay in these for a couple of weeks and then they go out into the garden anyway. But you could actually, if you felt really comfortable with it, you could actually just plant them right into your garden because the paper will biodegrade. So I always just fold down the top of this a little bit, usually around a third or so of the entire size of the paper because that helps the top of my pot to be a little bit more stable. So I just use a mason jar and I put the opening of the mason jar towards the unfolded side of the paper. Put the top at the very top like that and then I just roll it up like so. And then I take the bottom of the paper and I fold it in to the bottom of that. And kind of give it a little bit of a push down and then pull it up and I have a little pot that I can pot up my plants with. The nice thing about these is you can adjust them to whatever size you want. And I love using those pots. So that's one of the things that we are going to be doing a lot of in the next week is making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of paper pots. So I usually mix all my soil into some big bins like this and then moisten it down so that it's ready to go. And then we just take the paper pot, fill it with our soil, pack it down a little bit, so the bottom holds its shape and then fill it just about to the top, but not quite because I want room for my seedling to be able to go in there. And then I just set this in the tray and it holds its shape perfectly like that. So the only thing about these is I would definitely recommend putting them in trays if you're going to be moving them around because once they're wet, they will tear 
if you hold them or move them around too much. Like even just kind of the pressure of your finger on the side can poke a hole in it. It's one of the reasons why I like to fold them over so that they're a little bit more sturdy. But in trays like this, you can move them around as much as you want without risking tearing them. Do you want to just brad nail these on or do you want to? Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Good point. My, my legs don't bend that way. Getting old is weird, or older. <laughs> Hope I built this well. <laughs> Seems pretty sturdy. Please don't split. Yay! It's a lot more work if it splits. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hang on. We gotta get this side up. Go along and you gotta cut one, right? Do you have a measuring tape or do you wanna just use this board with a line on it? My goodness, that is a lot of wind blowing through here. So Dan has made an executive decision. He's going to put strips on every second of the, those aren't trusses. What are they called? I guess they're kind of like trusses, sort of. <laughs> anyway, just to hold it on better and it's gonna look tidier too. So that's awesome. I just ran up to the house and put some steaks on the barbecue and we're gonna have barbecued steak and Caesar salad for lunch, which will be nice. So we could probably work for like 20 more minutes or so. Okay, so Dan's gonna stay and finish putting those strips on, and I am going to head up to the house and get those steaks off the barbecue. I'll just ring the bell when it's ready, hon. And I'll bring you down to the grow room and I'll show you what we're dealing with down in the grow room. Man, when that wind dies down, it is toasty warm and beautiful out here, but as soon as it kicks up, it's freezing. Uh, anyway, I'll show you what we're dealing with as far as my tomato seedlings that are so sad. <laughs> I started them in soil blocks, which I always do, but have been neglectful of them. So this, uh, the seedlings I'm going to show you aren't my the bulk of the tomatoes that I grow. These are early ones I decided to start for fun, just some fun varieties. But the bulk of the Amish paste, the Arbison, the Manitoba bush, and the other ones that I grow for canning, those ones I started just a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week ago or so and they're just popping up so they'll be fine in the grow room for a bit yet. These are what you call stressed out tomatoes. So you can see we're getting a little bit of yellowing on the leaves, some curling, just not happy. But as soon as we get these planted into their bigger pots they'll perk right up. So I have a whole entire tray of basil started here some apple mallow on this side, and these were seeds that were gifted to me by my friend Corinne, and I'm looking forward to seeing those. These guys on this side are calendula, also gifted to me by Corinne. We have our artichokes that are just coming up here, jalapeno, banana pepper, California over there, cosmos, sage, our celery is looking lovely. So these are some of the early peppers. I started with some random grass growing in there as well. Little strawberries. These are actually gonna be able to go out into the garden. I'm just gonna cover them. These ones are our Amish paste seedlings, zinnia, more little tomatoes. And then of course, all of our other seedlings we started earlier. So we have tons of onions, some beautiful fennel. I only have the purple lights on the bottom here and the plants definitely don't look very beautiful <laughs> under that purple lighting. I have some little lavenders that really need to be potted up as well. So we have lots and lots of work to do to get all of these seedlings that I need to get potted up, potted up. Some of my snapdragons look like they're needing a little trim. Some that I missed. So I just wanna give you an example here. So this is one that I did trim and you can see that it's forming two branches off of it. So it's gonna be a nice bushy plant, but it looks like I missed a few. So I'm gonna have to go through and get those trimmed up. 
So we're gonna go eat some steaks and some Caesar salad. The steaks are just basic steaks with Montreal steak spice. And the Caesar salad is just romaine lettuce, some croutons, some bacon, and some cheese and simple dressing. So nothing fancy, but delicious, perfect thing to eat on a busy day. So we're gonna go get that all eaten up and then I'll be back with you to pot some of these tomatoes up shortly. We are onto the second day of this project. Dan worked, I don't know, until later into the evening last night and actually finished all of this and check this out. It looks so much better. So he actually went, did around the door for me, down the side. He did all the way along each of the, we're gonna call them trusses, <laughs> on the roof here. And he also redid the pulleys for me for my vents in the roof so I can pull one of these and it opens up the vent and then I can just hook it. He just used some old hot wire and then I can just hook it on to whatever, um, I don't know, distance I want the vent opened. I just think it looks so much better, so much tidier and I'm very grateful to him for doing that. So I wanted to show you what I've been doing this morning, making a bunch of paper pots, of course, and filling trays, filling the paper pots with soil. And now I also have a bucket of water down here. Give these a good soak. So the soil is pretty dry. And then we are going to pot up my very sad tomatoes. They are in desperate need, but I'll show you them in about a week or so. And you'll be shocked at how much better they are going to look just getting into some fresh soil with more space. These are probably the saddest little tomato seedlings I have ever had. Oh, the other thing that I did too was I hooked up my extension cords and my heaters in underneath. And once I'm done actually potting all of these tomatoes up and doing whatever else I wanna do in here today, I'd like to spend a couple of hours in here getting trays full of paper pots so that I can pot up everything else that I have in the indoor grow room that needs to be potted up, which there is a lot. I am going to get the plastic in here. So if I have time, I'll show you that today. If not, I'll bring you down when we have it all done in the next video and show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so these ones, you can see there's two in my little soil block. So I would recommend before you're going to pot up, give your seedlings a really good watering, especially if you're going to have to pull them apart because it just makes it a bit easier. So we're just gonna tease these apart carefully. I am going to go and take off the cotyledons. That's these first leaves here. And I think I'll pop that one off as well. And then I'm going to bury this right down to probably around here. So just below where the leaf branches, leaf branches start. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because with a tomato, I don't know if you can see, but there's little tiny nodules on the tomato stem, and those will actually turn into roots if they come into contact with the soil. So you can see these little tiny hairs on here. A lot of people think, and I did for many years, that it was actually those that turned into the roots, and that's not the case. Those are used to help regulate the temperature of and the moisture level of the plant itself. It's the little nodules that actually develop the roots. So we're gonna bury that way down and then we're going to top this off. I could have probably put that down a little bit deeper actually with soil and give it a good pack down. A little more water. So I actually didn't give this quite enough space although the soil's probably gonna settle down a little bit. I like to leave at least half an inch between the soil and the top of my paper pot just so that there's somewhere for the water to hold. It makes watering a lot faster because then you can fill it right up. It'll sink down, so there we go. So now we're gonna go along and do these all. So the ones that I'm doing right now are the Mountain Vineyard and I was super impressed. These are a hybrid tomato from High Mowing Seeds and I was really impressed with the germination on these. Every seed I planted germinated and of all of the seedlings, they looked the healthiest up until the point that they really needed to be pot up and I neglected them. But prior to that, they looked fantastic. I started all of these tomato varieties here early because these are just some fun ones that I uh, that my friend Ash from Moon Glow Gardens sent me back in February and I decided that I would try a bunch of them. 
my main crop of tomatoes, which are kind of the standard ones that I grow every year for canning, like the Amish paste, uh, the San Maranzo, what else? Um, Manitoba bush, a bunch of other varieties. Those ones I actually just planted a couple of uh, weeks ago. So they are just developing their true leaves right now. But because these ones are just more experimental and more for fun, I thought I would start a bunch of them early and see if we can't get some early tomatoes. So the varieties I have here are Marino's Praise, Tim's Taste, Duckling, uh, Golden Canary, Deep Space, uh, Cup of Chups, Crushed Heart, and Kaleidoscope Pink. And I started all these ones on March 9th. And had I actually potted them up when I should have, they would be much larger and much happier right now <laughs> than they are currently, I feel bad. Let's give these guys some water. These ones over here were ones I made yesterday and the soil was actually wet and I left them in here overnight and it's very, very cold. So I'm going to let that soil warm up before I put any of my tomatoes in them, but I have some more done over here. Okay, I'm gonna get to getting all of these tomatoes potted up, and then I think I'm going to enlist some help to move a whole bunch of trays of seedlings down here. So I'm going to bring everything down here that is fairly cold hardy. That would include all the snapdragons, all of the brassicas, what else? Uh, there's some herbs. I think I'll bring all of those down here and I'll actually get them in underneath some plastic and leave them out here. I think that's probably what I'll end up doing. All right, friends, we are now on to I think the third day of this video. So what's going to be around 25 minutes for you is now on to day three for me. I'm just heading down to the greenhouse because I did get a ton of my seedlings moved down there yesterday and put the little mini greenhouse set up in there. So I wanted to show you that. So this is how it looks. Just a little greenhouse inside of the greenhouse right down to the ground and I have two heaters under there They are thermostatically controlled set. I usually set them for around 23 degrees Celsius at night and Then uh, that way it doesn't overheat when the Sun starts beating in here in the morning those heaters will shut off That's really important. I've made that mistake before not having thermostatically controlled heaters. Don't do that Let's get this plastic pulled off and see how our seedlings are looking Hello everyone, looking good. Ooh, you're looking a little thirsty. I did pot up a couple of cabbages here and do be aware that when you pot up plants, sometimes they will go limp right away. Don't let that alarm you. Just give them some water, give them a few hours and they'll perk back, back up again, just like this. I also planted some more broccoli, made some soil blocks, potted up my little lavenders potted up some peppers, some Napa cabbages, some Copenhagen market cabbage. This one was dark boar kale, abundance kale, scarlet kale. I planted some strawberries and some pansies in these pots here. These are gonna be the pots that are gonna go out into the garden. So I figured instead of just potting them up, I would put them right in their pots. So one of the things that's really important if you have heaters is to lift your heaters up and get them up and out of the way because chances are at some point you'll come in to go water and forget the heaters are here and water them and that's not a good idea. Look at these gorgeous plants. This is fennel, isn't that beautiful? Look at that, gorgeous and it smells amazing. Little parsley. So, the hope here is that within the next couple of weeks, these very stressed tomatoes will take off and do just fine. My other tomatoes I'll be keeping in the house for probably another week before they come out here. I need to do some more cauliflower and broccoli, and then I also want to do some more cabbage. I need to start 
a bunch of trays of lettuce later on today. So by the next time you join me here in the greenhouse, it should be getting filled up. One side is full now, but we'll get this other side filled up within the next week or two. That's going to be it for today, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.